Hey, I'm Rachel. Welcome back to Oxheart Gardening. Today I'm going to show you how to not kill your garden if you're going to be using straw or hay as mulch. So I wouldn't even know that this was a problem that you had to think about unless Scott Head hadn't accidentally killed his whole garden by using a herbicide treated hay. And I'll link his video below where he talks about what happened, but basically the hay that he was using they decided for that year to spray it with a specific kind of herbicide and this is called an amino pyrrolid and this kind of herbicide is really great at keeping back certain kinds of weeds that would be affecting your hay and your straw crops however it is really really damaging to a lot of vegetables that we would grow in particular things like tomatoes and potatoes and so when Scott used this hay on his garden, his tomatoes in particular looked absolutely sickly. The leaves curled up and they just did not produce. And the really scary thing about this is that that herbicide can take years to break down. Now, eventually it will break down and go away and the spot where you've been planting will be okay again. In the meantime, you can be planting things that the herbicide does not affect, usually grasses. So like your corn would be okay. You could plant cover crops to just keep the, the, the soil healthy while you can't plant vegetables. But it, it does take a long time to remediate and a lot of work. And I know Scott went through all of this. And so when I am deciding to use straw mulch in my garden, I want to double check that that's not going to happen to me. And something like a lab test is really expensive and it takes a lot of time, but there is an at home test that you can do to see if this herbicide is present in the hay or straw that you're about to use on your garden. So what I have here, I have two containers. Um, these are just solo cups with Starbucks cups in them. Um, and this is the way I've been doing uh, starts. I have a hole in the bottom of this first cup and not in the second cup. Um, and this is particularly good for this uh, test because each pot is going to be self-contained and I'm not going to have this water dripping into a tray that's full of other plants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant both of these exactly the same with beans. Beans are one of the things that would be really, really affected by the amino pyrrolid. And so the reason I'm planting beans and not tomatoes, because tomatoes are also really affected, is because beans are going to grow really fast and I'm going to be able to see a lot sooner if they're deformed. So what I'm going to do, I'm using a burpee garden bean. Um, it's tender pod. I'm pretty sure this is a hybrid. And then I'm also going to be using the blue cocoa whole bean, which is an heirloom. So the gist of what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant two of each bean seed in each pot. Um, so that's four bean seeds per pot. Um, it doesn't matter if they're crowded because I'm not really planning on letting them get big and I'm not trying to use these plants to harvest from. I'm just using them to grow up a few leaves and see what they look like. All right, so now I've got my beans planted. The thing that I'm going to do to separate the two test cases is one of them I'm going to water with regular water that I water all my other starts with. And then the other one I'm going to water with this water. Um, this is straw from the bales that I just purchased and I am going to soak the straw in here for a few hours, pour the water to water my beans in one of the pots, and I'm going to keep refilling this with water, letting it soak and using this water only to water the single test pot. And then over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to monitor the growth of these two sets of bean plants and try and see if they look similar or if one of them is showing deformities. All right, so it has been three weeks since I sowed those beans. Let's take a look at what happened. This is the one without straw water. So this is our control. We're looking at the shape of the leaves. They're nice and flat. Everything looks super healthy. All these new leaves coming out flat and normal looking. Only the blue cocoa beans really sprouted um, and that was the case for both uh, cups so I think it was just the seeds. And now as we are looking at the one that had the straw water, the thing that we are looking for is curled up leaves coming out at the top. 
deformations, things that just don't look right. So originally both of these had sprouted and I had an issue with a really common indoor pest commonly called a cat. But this other one that wasn't eaten by the cat, we can see these leaves. These are looking flat and normal. And these newer leaves are also looking flat and normal. And so because the plant looks healthy and normal, that tells me that the straw does not contain amino pyrrolids and I feel safe putting it on my garden. So what do you do if you do this test and you find out that your straw does have amino pyrrolids in it? The first step is to not put it on your garden, but it is not a complete loss. You don't have to waste it. You cannot compost it, but you could spread it over the grassy areas of your yard because amino pyrrolids are formulated to be safe for grasses. That's why you find it on stuff like straw. So if you wanted to mulch your grass with it in the winter or something like that, that would be totally fine. But just make sure that you're not putting it anywhere where the runoff water from it can make its way into your garden. And if you can't find a way to use it in your own yard, you could give it away to somebody who has animals. It'll still make a great bedding. It is not gonna harm them at all. It is only a problem for your beans and tomatoes and potatoes and vegetables like that in your garden. I hope you guys found this really helpful. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe and I will see you next time. But until then, I wish you happy gardening and no amino pyrrolids.